السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا رضيت بالله ربا وبالإسلام دينا وبمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم رسولا ونبيا ربي أعوذ بك من همزات الشياطين وأعوذ بك ربي أن يحضرون ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم Uh, making very clear uh, the reports from the last uh, 24 to 48 hours. Um, there has been uh, several encounters, uh, one uh, taking place uh, just a few moments ago as a result of the confrontation uh, at the center with Iblisi uh, allies. And uh, as we uh, have noted before, This warfare is a spiritual, intellectual warfare. We are professional. Uh, the brothers, brothers, and brothers, intelligent and corporate brothers uh, were there yesterday as uh, the action took place. Uh, those who were present, uh, among them were, were ad adults, and among them were also children. Um, I think that it's important to note that there was prior uh, prior history, and this history is that um, a, a sister was uh, was contacted, and the sister uh, is a married sister, and she she was not happy, obviously, about the fact that she was contacted. Um, so she told her son, and um, this played into what uh, transpired yesterday. And uh, that's number one. Number two, um, this individual also, this, uh, this young man uh, who was confronting uh, yours truly also, was uh, at the Al-Bilal meeting. So this also has to be made clear before we actually discuss what transpired yesterday, uh, which was Friday. And um, from the recollection in all of the reports is that uh, the young man was already adamantly, you know, displaying as there were others who was standing there, he was not very, you know, very, very forthcoming or very, you know, polite at the time. Anyway, um, in terms of how he was uh, responding, this is Juma, we are trying to smile at one another. And uh, he was already, you know, trying to you know, keep away or break up uh, in, uh, conversations. Is at least you understand what it is that... Uh, from what I personally saw. So as he was leaving, um, he turned his back and uh, we tapped on the shoulder, basically. And um, as, uh, saying, aren't you going to, aren't you going to, to, to shake our hands as you're shaking everybody's hand to leave? And then, um, uh, you know, when we shook his hand, love you for the sake of Allah, is uh, what I said, and uh, I do recall him saying um, something along the same lines, and I reminded the young man that uh, love for taqwa, uh, friendship based on taqwa is the only friendship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards from the akhirah, not for any other type of ties, only ties based on taqwa. And uh, as he looked at me, I could tell also a sense that he, he wasn't believing because again, as he was standing around, you know, he was practically uh, drawing away and behaving or just uh, letting off the, 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 the feeling, the uh, chemistry that he did not want to uh, say anything nice and he did not want to do anything nice. But now uh, he's looking at yours truly like, I really don't believe you almost. You know, you're telling me that this is what Allah says. 
and um, I don't really believe you. So this is where I said to him, uh, it's okay, I can, I can pull up the ayah and, and send it to you. If you don't believe me, I can. So I said that to him in advance. He said, don't send me anything. I said to him, this is Quran I'm trying to send. He said, I don't care. And I don't appreciate you calling my Omi. I don't appreciate you calling my Omi. So I said, what? He repeated it, semi-repeated it. And of course, the, the brothers lashed out. Because uh, number one, uh, your Umi is an adult and okayed to be contacted. Number two, your Umi is married and her husband was also sorted his okay or his permission, who was actually on the phone when we called your Umi. So this is a second issue as to how it is that you are now, you are the child. How it is that, you know, adults have gotten together and spoken. It's taken place, you know, uh, maybe about a month ago. How it is now that you are, and you know, you have such animosity. So I asked the boy as he's standing in my face talking, why are you so hostile? And again, he doesn't appreciate me calling his umi, so of course as lashing out went, I let this boy know that I had questions for you, umi, who was Mubarak Jelani, why did he come to the United States, and what is TMOA? I asked her that while your stepdad was on the phone. She did not want to continue the conversation while he was on the phone. That's not my business. But it's not your business to tell me what it is that adults can and cannot do as they agree upon each other. So then he had to start to, this young man had to back up because this is no, no small matter. First of all, people need to understand that uh, our, uh, our, our adamant stand on, uh, on TMOA and Mubarak Jelani. We did not just wake up uh, two days, three days ago and decide that, um, you, know, we had to, you know, we had to take a stand against the, the ideology. This did not just happen yesterday. And this is something I had to let his umi know, who thought that I had been around for 15 years, calling me just an old chip off the block. I had to remind her that I've been following Mubarak Jilani and the TMOA because of the fact that the ex-wife that I had at the time had joined with my own little girls. This has been 21 years ago. I went into the quote-unquote spiritual wealth realm in order to fight and get my family back. Allah Ta'ala granted it to me and I got them back. When I did get them back, I asked again, what would happen if Mubarak Jilani died? I asked my wife that. What would happen if he died? She said, uh, we don't know, but he has sons. And I said to her back then, no. This may have been about 15, 16 years ago. By then, I was still asking questions that were not clarified. 20, the, the years prior to that, why it is that he had came here to begin with and why it is that he could not return here. Why it is that his English was not clear and he could not recite the Holy Qur'an. If he could not recite it, he could not be giving knowledge from the Qur'an because he does not know the language of the Qur'an. I was challenged then by her. She said to me, you don't know what you're talking about, the greatest miracle in New York. I said to her, I'm afraid not the Qur'an is the greatest miracle. She said he will split you like a banana. I said, yeah, sure. And how is that supposed to happen under the circumstances we are in today? The dead have to come back to life. That's how. But to make very really clear is that 
everybody has to acknowledge whether you are with or without TMOA, ICVA, ICR, ISGR, whoever, MCC, it does not matter. What matters is we are all believers. We all say that we are believers. And the only thing that matters is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, this Qur'an, what He gave us, this Qur'an. We are not going to allow any of those mentioned to make mockery of it, to make uh, 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 light of the Qur'an, to make claims that are unfounded in the Qur'an. You say that you have Muslims and you have a community of Muslimin and you're teaching which you cannot substantiate, which the Qur'an does not substantiate it, and we are supposed to be Muslimin, Muslim citizens, and we are supposed to keep quiet. This is what has been going on for decades. That's why it's as it is today. We cannot sit down and discuss our issues, get through our problems, sort through our circumstances. We are unable to even get through the Qur'an and understand how it can be applied or how it does apply to us today. So, what I ended up doing was I called his stepfather because his stepfather, uh, again, once uh, we spoke before, the parents spoke before about TMOA and the aftermath of that conversation. It, it's been a cordial conversation, so... I contacted his stepfather and I said to him, I realize you were not at Juma yesterday, but your stepson stepped to me telling me I had uh, no right to call his mother or I, it was not to his liking or he did not appreciate it. First of all, I spoke to his mother when he was still in diapers. Secondly, I got your okay. I'm saying to him and I told him, I got your okay to talk to your wife and we were on three way. So how is it that he can come a month later and say anything about that? What are we now? We are the children and they are the adults. So he said he will talk to both of them. Why he needed to talk to both, I don't know. The mother was not there. This is what uh, the report says. So when he contacted me today, it was, you know, it was shocking I have to say, because of the fact that uh, simply giving him the understanding as to what was wrong and him acknowledging what was wrong and saying what it is that he said that he would take care of it, that should have been enough. However, what it is that uh, he did, as he mentioned, he would talk to his stepson and uh, he spoke to his wife. And so he calls back today and says now he's heard the full story. He does not want anybody to, you know, as rightfully so, as everybody's right to mess around with his family. If his family is following whoever they want to follow, then there is no business of anybody else in it. And um, let's, uh, let's make sure that yours truly understands that whatever it is that um, uh, I am doing, to leave his family out of it. And so um, I think that we have to make very clear that first of all, we are not here for any worldly gains, family, money, friends. We're not here for any of that. We're not here for any type of status. We're not here for any type of wage. We're only here now and today. The end of today is not even assured to us. We do not need to get anybody's involvement in any way, shape or form. It's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we count on. Number two, everybody who says La ilaha illallah, everybody who subscribes to La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, every Muslim citizen, has an absolute right to speak out against falsehood, specifically and particularly when it pertains to Al-Islam. We might not like the fact that we are imperfect, but we really are imperfect. And when there is truth, we have every responsibility to substantiate it. 
I'm not going to substantiate this truth because somebody else is involved in it that other than people that I like or other than an individual that I like? Is that how you decide to practice Islam? I'm going to do certain things depending on how somebody else did it. Not Rasul salam, not his companions. But I'm going to do it because of the fact that others who came later wrote their books and said that this is the way to do it. That's why I'm going to do it. So, I have to make very clear that we're not here for any type of uh, ambitious, uh, lower desires. We're only here for the shahada to Allah, ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From Allah we come into Him alone, we must return. Uh, so this was made very clear uh, to, to, the father, to the Father, excuse me, and uh, also another very important uh, clear message as uh, uh, communicated earlier, was that, you know, you want to say something about Islam, that Islam has a reviver who just uh, established their community. You want to claim that this reviver is a spiritual leader, that they revived, uh, they brought the dead back to life. You want to claim that they moved the sun, the moon. You want to claim the skies. Bring it evidence. You don't want to hear any questions about that whatsoever. You don't want to respond. You don't want to substantiate. And you want to say that you have the truth. You want to say that anybody who does otherwise is false. And you're the one with the truth. So this is the issue for all of the Muslims today. Even as general amnesty is placed on all of us, we still state, if you really do believe in Allah, and the last day, substantiate the truth, be accepting to the truth, be rejectful to the falsehood, purely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reward. So, alhamdulillah, I mean, you know, after making several points clear to him, again, um, how it is, um, you know, that I could get out of line with a child just because a child is getting out of line. But you were not there to say if I was out of line or not. But we both already agreed that your child was out of line. So I myself say that what happens when a child gets out of line and an adult, an adult is there, they must deal with it accordingly. And that's exactly what the Brothers Brothers Incorporated Brothers were there saying. That we're dealing with it professionally and accordingly. Raising of the voices, yes. And when we raise the voice, it's because of the statement that he made and what we said to him, again, was what we asked your mother and your stepfather was, who is Mubarak Jilani? Why did he come to the United States? What was his mission here back 40 years ago? And what is TMOA? That's all. So, we're going to uh, continue Insha'Allah to be very firm on the truth. We are not going to, going to get the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by substantiating falsehood, by rejecting the truth. We're not going to get anywhere with Allah. So we're going to stay where we, where we are. We're going to continue and persist to move forward with what we're doing for the reward of Allah and those who are doing other things. Keep doing what you're doing and we will keep doing what we're doing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will indeed reveal who is right among us and who is wrong. He promises to substantiate the truth. Do you think and do, could I or anybody else think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes false claims, predictions, anything? Astaghfirullah al-Aliyun Azim. So, he was there, he was out of line, the adult who was there, confronted the situation on that basis. You were not there. But the other adults say that your child has no respect for his parents. And this is the reason why he was actually disrespectful and out of line himself. So agreeing to move forward and getting the pleasure of Allah, getting the reward of Allah, we're willing to lay our lives down for it. We're not relenting in any way, shape, or form. 
And from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this message comes. And indeed, the substantiation of it is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. May He make clear that in which is dark, which is unclear, and truth clear and easy and acceptable for all of us to follow, and the falsehood easy for us to see, understand, and rejectful of. So the last thing, when we talk about sitting down and talking through our, our problems, this individual, and this is where it has to end. So let's sit down and talk about our problems. So he says, in order for, he believes in order for us to sit down and discuss our issues civilly and professionally, we have to have learned people among us. Okay. So the question is, do we not have any learned people amongst us in this great leading nation of the United States? And he says, I don't know, I'll have to think about that. Yours truly has to get off the phone, unfortunately. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.